you love Jesus, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Christ has risen. Indeed, He has risen. When you go to His tomb, He is not there. And His blood was shed for you, for me. For the drug addict, for the alcoholic, for the jailbird, for those that are dying, lost, forsaken, for those that feel abandoned, those that are sick, this blood is for them. And what a message that we carry. We carry the message of the resurrection, of the resurrected Lord. And we can share that good news that Jesus Christ came to die for all sin for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life father we thank you for this gift this free gift of salvation we thank you that you shed your blood for us, that you are willing to die in such an awful, awful way. But Lord, you didn't stay in the grave. On the third day, you rose from the grave. You rose from the grave. Death could not hold you. You took the keys of hell and death. And we thank you, Father, that today, we serve the living Lord because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Oh, Jesus, Christ alone, Christ alone deserves the glory and the honor. Jesus, we love you so much. We love you so much, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we're so thankful that we have this opportunity on Resurrection Day to remember what you did. And we don't take lightly. We don't want it just to be another holiday. It's not about Easter bunnies and Easter eggs, Lord. It's about you, the risen Savior. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We just take a moment and we say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence that has certainly filled this place during this worship time. Thank you, Lord. We acknowledge your presence. We appreciate you, Jesus. We appreciate you. We love you so much. Oh, King of kings and Lord of lords, we love you so very much. Christ has risen. Indeed, he has risen. Christ has risen. Indeed, he has risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you the truth, during some of that worship, it was so powerful to me. I could have fell right over. We were singing that song, Because He Lives. I felt that lightning was filling my soul. Because it's the truth. You go to the tomb of Buddha, he is still there. You go to the tomb of any of the other gods, still there. They're just earthly men. But you go to the tomb of Jesus, he has risen. He has risen. And I just want to acknowledge the risen Lord today. We're so thankful that you came out tonight. 
There's a lot of things that you could do on a holiday night. Some of you probably went to church this morning, but yet here you are. And we appreciate you coming out tonight. We love you so much. We wanted to celebrate this beautiful day with you. We're so thankful that you are here. You are not here by accident. The Lord has drawn you for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, we're just a few short days from kicking off Oasis Bible Training Center. We are continuing to get new students every single day. Somebody is enrolling from somewhere around the world. We have some that are going to drive here from Albany every week. Some that are driving from Utica every single week. Some coming, I think, from the Buffalo area. So it is amazing how God is drawing people. And I just have this sense that the Lord is taking a stake or a flag and he is pounding it into the ground and declaring that this ground is holy ground. Amen. And that he is going to make history through the birth of a Bible school that's close to his heart. And I cannot wait to see as time goes on what he does. I do know this, that the Lord specifically spoke to me and he said that the spring quarter is just a dress rehearsal. It's just a warm up to what he's going to do in the fall. We're doing two classes right now, but in the fall, our goal is five classes. And I cannot wait to see what God has planned for us. Can you imagine, as I was standing back there, I was thinking to myself, they will come within the four walls of Oasis, they'll come to the Holy Fire service, you are included, and lives are going to be touched by Jesus as we lift up Jesus alone. Only he is going to get the glory. We are going to give him all the glory. It has nothing to do with a man. It has all to do with King Jesus. So please pray and intercede. Because Wednesday night, ready or not, we are kicking it off with chapel. And then on Thursday, classes start. And I can't wait to start. I cannot wait. I've been praying and asking the Lord that he would give me messages after his own heart. A few days ago, toward morning, early in the morning, I heard a literal knocking. It was that loud. It was so loud that it woke me up. I thought, is someone knocking on my window? But no one was there. And I knew that the Lord had called me to go into prayer, specifically about Oasis. And as I went into prayer, he beautifully gave me my first message for Wednesday for chapel. And then he quickened me so much about Thursday, exactly how I'm to begin. And I just can't wait to see what he's going to do. So we need your prayers. It's still not too late to register. There's no excuse not to register. We are a faith school, so it's people, all who want to come can come. Amen. We're, we're trusting the Lord. He'll take care of everything else, but whosoever will. And every time I say that, I feel like weeping. Whosoever will, come. Jesus. Hallelujah. Brother Ron, it's been a while since our great brother here has blessed us with a few words and announcements. So here he is. Amen. <laughs> Hey everybody. Hey. Uh, Welcome back. Nice to see you all. Yeah. Ready to make it. We're going to take out the offering. Um, take a hold of the basket. You can start it there, brother. You got a few words to say. 
<laughs> yeah, it's all yours. <laughs> one of these days. One of these days. I have one of the announcements, the sign-up sheet for food. The conference is coming up just a touch over a month. Steve did not hold up a poster this week, which I was astounded. But it's coming. Just a touch over a month. And now is probably the time to start putting them up if you have a place to put them up. Because it's not too far away, and it's not right on top of us. People will see it. The place where you got it won't tear it down because it's been there too long. But if there's large ones, there's small ones, we can drop them off in various places um, and encourage people to come. Just let them know it's here. I can't tell you how many times I've been surprised by some of the stuff in Wayne County. There's a Bible study right up from the road for me that's gone on for decades. I had never heard of it. All of a sudden, about four months ago, somebody said, hey, you ought to come down the road. A friend of ours, Ernie, actually, said you ought to come down. <laughs> so it's kind of a surprise. So people are interested. We just got to let them know what's going on. Um, it's coming up. I have the food sign-up sheet. I made the mistake of putting my glasses on top of my head. They don't work well there. If you sign up, we need the food Friday night, Saturday morning at the latest. Um, and we're going to be Friday night and all day Saturday, correct, Steve? Yeah. And Sunday. And Sunday. Sunday morning, Sunday night. Excellent. Excellent. It's going to be good to get together, and there are going to be a lot of people here. So we get to meet new ones. So we're going to pass this around. Sorry. Thanks. What else we got for announcements? Oasis starts Wednesday. We've been waiting a long time for that too. That's exciting. Okay. Um, I don't know how many of y'all are going to be here, but I'll be here singing, you know, chapel, off key. That's me. But <laughs> God appreciates it. Who else cares? Who else matters, right? Um, and we're here. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Um, you know, it's amazing that Steve had the beginning video of the of, of the disciples peeking in the tomb. Uh, Saturday or Sunday, Friday or Saturday morning. I, I just, I, I got coffee. I'm in the dark. I'm praying. And, and this, just not really a vision per se, but in my mind's eye, I'm, I'm just going through all these scenarios. I mean, if we think about it, here's these guys about 2,000 years ago. They're following Jesus. They're living with him. They're roughing it. They're, they're you know, just walking through life in that era for three years. And they're being taught. And they're, they're growing in, in love and getting closer and closer. And, you know, at the Last Supper, he's demonstrating that love by washing their feet and their whole life, they're focusing on their king, their Messiah. He's here. He's walking with us. I can't believe this. Can you imagine that? I can't believe this. And they're talking to each other. He's here. He's here. And then all of a sudden, he's on a cross. And I'm thinking about the next morning when they wake up. It's like their whole life is shattered. All their dreams, all their hopes, their future. I, I mean, I don't know. If, if you've ever had an instance where, where something janked out from under your feet and, it, and, and your whole future that you see years in advance, decades even, just vanishes. And life, life seems empty and it's a blur and, and you, don't, you don't even know where to take your next step. And then suddenly, like the video, it's Sunday morning. And it brings tears to my eyes when I think about it. Because there's nothing, you know, it's like nothing we could do here could give justice to that moment when they looked in there. Or when he appeared in the room for the first time before all of them. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. Just imagine that. He just pops in the room. And he's not supposed to be there. brother. My dad and I were trying to figure out the last time that he was here. And it was like in January. And so you know that he had some health struggles and then he was hospitalized. And 
it was a long, hard road, and we didn't know if he was going to pull out of that. But here he is. Hallelujah. And he just had his blood checked just last week, and the doctors were absolutely amazed at how much his white cells, red cells, and platelets are up, way up. They think that the chemotherapy that he had was successful, but I think King Jesus yes. had something to do with that because those doctors and nurses were like, whoa, we can't believe it. Usually it takes several rounds of chemo to get desired results, and sometimes it doesn't even work after all of that. They, here he is, and I, I told my dad over and over again, you can't go anywhere until you see Oasis really moving. And you have to be a teacher for a while before we can release you. So dad, your time is now. Welcome. Good job, son. You've been faithful. And daughter. Where have you all been? Looking <laughs> <laughs> right for you. Right here. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I appreciate you folks. I know it's because of the love and your prayers that I'm standing here tonight. Right. And all those that are online as well. There's been multitudes of people that's been praying for me. It was difficult, but sometimes you learn things through suffering, too. But I'm so thankful that I can be here tonight and stand behind this sacred desk. And as we celebrate the resurrected Christ, there's no other religion there's no other sect of people that are as blessed as we are. Amen. What we're experiencing right now is, is a temporary thing. But one day we're going to be worshiping God together up there. Amen. Can you imagine Amen. what that's going to be like? Can you imagine yes. being with Christ, actually having the opportunity to walk and talk with Jesus. Amen. It's amazing. It certainly is amazing. <clears throat> As we were worshiping tonight, talking about the, the crucifixion and the resurrection, I thought, well, Lord, and this was way back in the hospital when I was asking God, well, Lord, what do you want me to share when I first stand up in front of the people? What is it that you want me to talk about? The, the crucifixion in, was a horrible thing. Probably man's most traumatic way of of making a person suffer. But the resurrection, can you imagine when that tomb was open? One of the Gospels, it talks about the, the guards that fell on their, just fell over when Jesus came forth from the grave. 
tremendous. But I said, Lord, what is it you want me to share? And I believe the Lord spoke to me and he said, talk to them about the 40 days that Jesus walked with his disciples and talked to them after he arose from the dead. It was 40 days that Jesus appeared at times as they gathered together. What must that have been like? I mean, he still had the scars in his hands, right? Yeah. And as he prepared the fish, you remember they were all fishing and Jesus was on the shore and he made a lunch. As he prepared the fish and as they, they Peter jumped into the water and started swimming to get to Jesus. Think about it. And then as Jesus breaking the fish, and they're looking at the scars of his hands. Can you imagine the tremendous feeling that must have been? The realization, the one that they saw hung on the cross was before them now alive. Hallelujah. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Yes. But I believe that Jesus wants to, to empower us. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Here at Refuge and, and as we start the school, we talk about the presence of the Holy Spirit and how important his manifest presence is and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Without the anointing, the yoke can't be broken. Without the Holy Spirit's power, we're no match for the devil. We're looking at our world today crumbling before us. We're seeing all of the things that's going on. And we wag our heads and we say, how can this be? How can people be so ignorant? Why don't they see this sin? And we know that the that devil is, is so it's so easy for him to blind the eyes of people, it seems. Before I start to read the scripture, I want to pray. Father, I ask in Jesus' name tonight that you open our eyes and let us see, God, how important it is that we have an encounter with you. Lord, we're so grateful that you arose from the dead. And you're alive. But Father, you spoke to your disciples just before you went up into the heavenlies. You said, wait for the promise of the Father. So they waited, Father, in that upper room. So Father, we ask tonight you open our understanding and cause us to realize, Lord, that we need a download of your power in our spirit. Amen. That we must come against this enemy with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Open our understanding, Father. Cause us to be sponges, Lord, of your Holy Spirit. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in Luke 24, 49, Behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Up until that point, they were hiding. They were in the upper room where they had the Last Supper. And they were hiding up there, scared to death of the Romans, scared to the death of, of the, the guards from the Sanhedrin. They didn't know what to do. They were, they were just useless. And that's what we are with all the power of God. <laughs> so Jesus told them, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 reads, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. 
What are our weapons? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We can't do it with education. That's not what Oasis is about, education. Oasis is about getting the Spirit of God and the words of God into our spirit, not into our minds. Oh, we'll understand it with our mind, but when you get it into your spirit, it becomes life. And then you can begin to share that life with others, and it will change people's lives. When you really believe it from the inside, when you believe what you're saying is real, and you yes. walk it in everyday life, it will change other people's lives. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. The question is, why don't we see more of the power of God in ministry? Why is it we don't see the power of God in ministry today? Now, the gifts of the Spirit, the gift of tongues, the interpretation of tongues, prophecy, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits, the gifts of healing, working of miracles, and the gift of faith, nine gifts of the Spirit. We only see most of the time the gift of tongues, the interpretation of tongues at times, in prophecy. Now we're not talking about the office of a prophet. We're talking about the gift of prophecy in the, in the nine gifts. Now these gifts are important, but we don't actually walk in them, do we? Hello? <laughs> Do we? You don't see these gifts operating. And I asked the God, Lord, I said, Lord, why is it we don't see these gifts operate in your body? The example that I can give you is this. Would you give the car keys to your 10-year-old son? No, he will. No. Why? Because he's going to harm himself and other people. He's not mature enough. So those gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to build the body, to grow the body, to cause the body to be fully functional, to minister to those that are bound to speak a word of encouragement, a word of life to those when they're fully functioning. But the trouble is, they can't be given to somebody that's not mature. He must be able to trust us with the gifts. You say, well, Brother Porter, what are you talking about? Well, I'm just going to give you a little history. There's been many people that have been given gifts, and after a few years, has gone to their head. And they begin to build a kingdom for themselves. I was probably getting trouble saying this, but some of them live in castles. Multi-million dollar buildings. Where there's a whole lot of people out there that need to hear the gospel. I want my mansion in heaven. Amen. Not that way, is there not? Amen. But he must be able to trust us. We must see the need that God wants to take us. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost to come upon you. We must have that power to do the ministry that God has called us to do. It's my prayer and our, our, when we when we go to school at Oasis, not only will we experience the manifest presence of God and learn how to get close to Him, but we'll learn how to walk in the Spirit and we'll learn how to get to the place where God can trust us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
God is not a stingy God. God is not a stingy God. Does he want to empower you? How many believe that God wants to empower you? To do what? To do ministry. Because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's only the anointing that breaks the yokes. Words don't do it. That's right. THDs and LLDs and all of them. You can go to a seminary. <laughs> and believe me, those, those degrees, they mean something. Maybe God can use them in some way, but it's the power of God that he can really use if he can use that power through you. And if he can get the glory, he must get the glory. Amen. Steve was talking about the school. It's not about us. It's not about him. It's not about oasis. It's not about refuge. It's about Jesus. Amen. We must get to the place where God can trust us and empower us to do the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's nine fruit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, and have not love. I should have looked at the scripture and read it, but I'm not going to take the time. Faith, hope, and love, it says. Mm -hmm. Faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. You must have the fruit. You operate the gifts of the Spirit. But you have to have the fruit of the Spirit to operate the gifts of the Spirit. If you don't, God will give you a word. For instance, God gives me a word of one of you. He says, Wayne, this person has done such and such. Well, we'll just say for you, um, you went to to the dollar store and you stole something. And God told me, hey, did you know that Brother so and so stole something from the dollar store? God shared that with me. The word of knowledge. Now what do I do with that? That's the gift of the Spirit. What do I do with that? Well, I have to Whatever I do, it has to be in love. I'm not there to destroy the person. I'm there to encourage him and strengthen him and heal him. Amen? Amen. When God can trust us with a word of knowledge about somebody or something, mm -hmm. then he can use us. You know, he will start on a small probably, just give you a little something. Later on, if he can trust you, he'll give you greater things. But the word of knowledge and a word of wisdom, God can give you wisdom about a certain situation. Rather than a who's got all of a sudden, boom, he's, he just puts that into your spirit. This is the answer for that. You say, what do I know? I got the answer for that. Look what I know. Everybody goes, wow. <laughs> Look at Brother Porter. He's, he's got the answer. He's got the wisdom. Wow. No. I make sure God gets all the <coughs> I take none for myself. God wants to empower you, folks. Not just in church service. But as you do your daily walk with God, mm -hmm. he wants to empower you to reach out to people. And when he can trust you with that power, yeah. when he can trust you with the gifts of the Spirit, 
not just tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. Those are important. And he will use us in those gifts. But when he can start to use us with a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom, or the deserting of spirits, when he can start using you for gifts of healing, remember I, I'm saying gifts of healing. A lot of people I say it was a gift of healing. No, it was gifts of healing. Right. Some people are empowered to heal people with cancer. Some people, God will empower to heal people with blinded eyes. There's gifts of healing. And he'll give you, but can he trust you with it? Will you take the glory for it? Will you get puffed up about it? That's the question. Jesus came forth from the grave. The tomb is empty. He walked with his children for 40 days. And he told him just before he left, tarry ye into Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. They didn't do ministry until that day. And right after that, you find Peter and John going down to the beautiful gate. And here's the lame man that's been there I hope his whole life. And Peter says, look on us. Silver and gold, I don't have any. But such as I have. He didn't have it yesterday. He didn't have it yesterday. But when he tarried in Jerusalem and he got endued with power, he had it. Look on us. Silver and gold I don't have, but look on us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Praise the Lord. Did Peter and John take the credit? No. What did they have? They had 5,000 people revival. <laughs> can it happen again? You better believe it can happen again. Yeah. When we get ourselves lined up with God, God can yeah. use us in such a way that will bring glory to his holy name. Yeah. He will be magnified and glorified. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, God wants to use us, folks. Yeah. Oh, he wants to use us. There's a difference between I want to just talk about the, the manifest presence of God for a moment. And you guys talk about that a lot. All the bugler and others, they, they talk about it in their ministries. How the very presence of God would come into their room. What was the purpose for that? Of course, that's to draw close to him. You empower us. In the Old Testament, you hear about the Shekinah glory. You remember Solomon's temple when they were, it was all constructed and it was ready to, to be used. They dedicated the temple. And as they finished, as Solomon finished praying, The Shekinah glory came in. And it says the priest could not stand because of the Shekinah glory. What happened? Why could they fell over under the power of God? The power became so strong. In the New, New Testament, we have the manifest presence. Basically the same thing. And God can get so strong. The power can get so strong that you can't stand. It can happen to you. <laughs> it's glorious. Have you ever been drunk in the spirit? I have. It's better than wine. It's a new wine. It's wonderful. Don't have a hangover. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's wonderful. Yeah, the manifest presence. 
And on the day of Pentecost, you remember how the Holy Spirit came like a rushing mighty wind. And then cloven tongues of fire came down and rested upon all of them. And oh, God showed up, didn't he? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit showed up. Jesus told his disciples, he says, I'm going back to the Father. And he's going to send you the Comforter, Amen. the Holy Spirit. What for? To empower us. Yes. To give us a, a, a ministry. We don't have a ministry without him. Words won't do it. Education won't do it. But the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit will do it every time. You see, it's so important to be able to hear from God. He may cause you to walk by ten houses and have you stop at one. You don't find hit and miss ministry in, this, in the Bible. In Bible college, they told me they had personal evangelism classes in it. And they taught you how to go with, and to uh, talk to people. And uh, they taught us to go and bang on every door. But you know, I always use this example. What if I'm banging on every door and up on 10th Street that somebody brought ready to commit suicide? Mm -hmm. If the Holy Spirit's moving within me, you say, go to 10th Street. Right? Amen. Go to the ministry. Amen. What are you doing down here banging on these doors? Be led of the Spirit. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what he wants to do. Get us to the point where we're sensitive. Have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying yes. to the church. Yes. Having ears to hear. We should be praying that all the time. Father, give me ears to hear. Cause my spirit, Lord, to be as a sponge. Let me soak up you, O oh God. Oh, hallelujah. You must have the anointing in order to exercise the gifts. Now, let me explain something to you. I don't know where it started, but I was taught way back that in order to exercise a gift, we'll take, for instance, tongues in a service. That you had to wait for an anointing to come upon you to give forth the message. Now, sometimes a, a small anointing will come. Now, what does that mean if you don't have a powerful anointing? Most of the time, that's a confirmation anointing. Somebody else, the Holy Ghost, God's ghost is working on, on touching somebody and wanting them to use the gift of tongues. So it's like school. So the anointing, you're, you know that the Holy Spirit is going to give forth a word. But you only have a little bit of anointing as a confirmation. What did you need to do? Pray. Pray. Say, Oh, Father. Let this word come forth. And if they disobey, then the anointing will increase in your life and you will give forth that word. But you must have the full power of the anointing of your spirit before you give forth a word. Has that ever been taught to you? Not very often. Sometimes, maybe. But it's important that we understand that. The gifts of the Spirit. When you'll know when the Holy Spirit wants you to speak. I remember the first time I was just a teenager. The first time I gave a message in tongues. I was sitting there and it was like, it was like, I can only imagine it, you know, the electric chair when they put that thing on top of the person's head. It, it was just like, it's just like power coming down through. I mean, I was just, just sitting there going, and I had already prayed. I said, Lord, I was sitting in that service, and I said, Lord, uh, it just seems to me that something should happen. There should be a message and something. There should be a move of the Spirit. And I was just praying, and I said, Lord, I'll be faithful if you use me. 
They started coming. They just started coming. Do you know what I did? I chickened out. I did. I chickened out. I didn't obey. So the next service, this was a weekend thing. It was a, the next service, I said, I said, Lord, so, I'm so sorry. If you if you'll give me another chance, I'll, I'll obey. He did. And I gave, I gave a message in tongues. Later on, he gave me the, the ability to interpret and to get the prophecy. But you see, it's important that we recognize we must have that anointing. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that empowers us. It's the anointing to know what to do next. You're walking in Walmart and you're, you're just minding your own business and you got your basket and you're putting some things in the basket and all of a sudden, you feel the power of the Holy Spirit upon you. And then your attention is drawn to somebody. God might even tell you that person's going to commit suicide unless you do something about it. Or they just might have a broken heart. And they need to be encouraged. Or they might be just at that point. You see, there's different seasons in people's lives. There's a, the hiring time, the plowing up time. <clears throat> There's a seed time, and then there's the harvest. We don't know what the seasons of a person's life is, but the Holy Spirit does. We might be there to plant a seed. We might be there to bring forth a harvest. We all get the same reward, by the way, if you obey. So you're walking in Walmart, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you stop and you say, Lord, what is it? What do you want to tell me, Lord? And then he draws your attention to somebody. And you obey. And that person's saved. That person's healed. That person's is ministered to. You go home happy and they go home happy. Yeah, amen. 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 Oh, God wants to use you, folks. He wants to use you. He's no respect for persons. Mm -hmm. Carry you in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. We must have that power. We must have that anointing. The reason why Oasis, the Lord teaches us in Oasis, the manifest presence is not just a slaying. It's a reality. Some of you are going to experience Jesus. You might even see him with your eyes. Sometimes he does appear. I saw him as a 15-year-old boy. I knew hardly anything about anything. But I was lying in bed all by myself. And all of a sudden, there he was at the foot of my bed. I'll never, ever forget that. Never. Why did he do that? I don't know. It never happened since. But I know it's called to the ministry because of that. I wonder if you say, I must, I must have this power. I must have this experience with God. It's a must. Can you say that? Yes, it must. It must. It must. It must. I must have it. There's more and I want more. There's more. I want to get all the glory. Tell him over and over again, Lord, I want you to get all the glory. I want you to have it all, Lord. Just let me be a vessel. Jesus, make me an instrument. Yes. An instrument of blessing. Yes. Oh, 
Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 14 says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. It's not wrong to desire spiritual gifts. It's right for you to desire spiritual gifts. If you want them for the right reason. Never say, oh yeah, Pastor Stevie, it's all right for him, but look old, little old me. Yeah. <coughs> That's what God's looking for, is little old us. Exactly. Amen. 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 He's looking for little old us. Don't look at somebody and say, oh yeah, God can use them, but not me. Yeah, he knows exactly what he wants. <laughs> we look into him. This week there was a, a terrible accident. You probably seen it. The <coughs> container ship in Baltimore. It lost its power, and because it lost its power, it lost its steering. That ship was designed to go down that channel and go out into the ocean and go to wherever it was going. But it lost its power, and because it lost its power, it lost its steering. And what it did was made a big mess. We're quite a lot like that, you know. If we lose the power, we'll lose the ability to know where we're going to be able to steer our lives in the right direction. If you seek the face of God with all your heart, He will empower you. He is no respecter. He doesn't love me more than he loves you. You say, oh yeah, but, but, but so and so is Christians and stuff. I don't believe that has nothing to do with anything. He loves you just as much as he loves me. Or the Pope. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think I'm preached out. Father, as I come before you tonight, I thank you for these precious people, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we no respect of persons. I thank you, Lord, that you've got a work for all of us to do. Individually and corporately, you've called us, Lord, to make a difference. So, Father, tonight I ask in Jesus' name that this word that's been shared tonight, Lord, we just find a, a real lodging place in each heart. And we will move towards that encounter with you, Lord. That empowerment that can come from the Holy Spirit. That we'll be willing to pay the price, Lord. Willing to pay the price, Father, to have that close encounter, that close relationship with you. That you may be, may be able to trust us with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the mighty gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let it be so, Father, in Jesus' name. Yes. In Jesus' name. Is there anybody here tonight that's never spoken in tongues? Everybody has. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Well, that's just the beginning. <laughs> Take you on in. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the Stevie. Come on.
I thank the Lord that I was able to stand up here tonight. I tell you, we just seen a miracle. Yeah. Amen. Walking miracle. Because I'm with him all the time. <laughs> and he can't stand longer than five minutes. In the morning, even as he's getting coffee or whatever, he goes, oh, I gotta take a break, and he sits down. He just stood for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. That's it. Which is an illustration of what the anointing of God can do. See, it, it's not our ability. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of God on us. Hallelujah. So we've learned something tonight. What a great teaching that was. That we would operate and to be desirous of the gifts of the Spirit through the fruit of the Spirit in order to give Him glory. If I had my chalkboard out, which I will this week, I would write down gifts of the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit, and glory. Hallelujah. So let that be your prayer tonight. Lord, give me the gifts of the Spirit those that you desire me to flow through. But Lord, let me operate through the fruit of the Spirit that I may bring you glory. I've seen a lot of mean prophets. I've seen some treat Christ's bride so awful giving her a tongue lashing. Just because we have the power of God doesn't mean we shouldn't operate with Christ's heart. Our ministry should be to lift people. I'm so thankful that King Jesus looks at Steve Porter not through the lens of my past or all of my weaknesses or all of my flaws, but he comes alongside of me like a proud father and he whispers in my ear, my son, stand. When you've done all you can do, stand. If you fall and get back up again, keep on moving. You can do it. You can do all things through Christ who gives us. You strength. You see, the Father is always lifting us. So if you see somebody being mean and beating Christ's bride, shut them off. That is not the heart of God. That's right. That's right. Come on. Yes, the Lord gets angry, but he's always lifting people through restoration. Even the most awfulest of vilest of sinners, he wants to breathe life into them. Can these bones live? Aren't you thankful that the Lord never gave up on you? I've given up on myself through the many decades that I've been alive. There are times I gave up on myself, but the Lord never gave up on me. Hallelujah. You may have forgot the dreams, the prophetic words, and the vision that God has for your life. You may have forgot, but he hasn't forgotten. And tonight he wants to breathe inside of you, giving you his power because he can trust you. And he wants you to operate through the fruit of the Spirit. I tell you, I can't wait to teach on this. It is so important. We do not hear it enough in the body of Christ. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is so important. We got so many people running around the body of Christ right now. They have gifts with no fruit. But if we could be desirous of spiritual gifts, gifts operating through the fruit, that we may give him glory. Gifts, fruit, glory. Remember that. Wow. So, Lord Jesus, we pray that. We're desirous of spiritual gifts tonight, Lord. That we may enter into our purpose and our destiny. That which you have planned for us from the foundations of the world. You created us for such a time as this. And Lord, we want to operate in those gifts. But Lord, we want to do so under the fruit of the Spirit. With the fruit of the Spirit. Flowing out with the gift of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, that we may bring glory to your holy name. Lord, when others see us, let them see you. When others hear us, may they hear you. When others see our eyes, may they see the eyes of Jesus. Even when we contact someone for a very brief moment in a doctor's office, at Walmart, at a checkout counter, pumping gas, or let us leave others better than when they first met us. Oh, Jesus. We desire to be Christ-like. We desire to be like our sweet master. Lord, so give us the gifts that we may have the power. Give us the fruit and let our lives bring you glory. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I tell you what a wonderful resurrection even this has been. It has been good to be in the house of the Lord. Wednesday night, it all kicks off. If you're not coming because you, know, you, you don't feel called to be a student, would you pray for us? We're opening up the doors at 4 o'clock on Wednesday for those that desire to pray. We're going to have an atmosphere of prayer before it even starts. From four to five, we'll pray, or five to six, we'll pray, and then six o'clock, we start. I can't wait. Countdown. Just a few more days. Pray. Chapel, right? Chapel. And then Thursday, we'll open our doors early as well if you want to come and pray. Hallelujah. Father, bless your people. May your face shine upon them. I speak increase over them. I speak favor over them. I speak the manifest presence over them. I speak the anointing of the Lord over them. Embrace them, Lord. Hold them close, I pray this week. Lord, give them dreams. Give them visions. Let them hear the knocking. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would make yourself so real to these precious ones that are watching online right now and those that are sitting here. Make yourself so real that their lives will be altered forever. In the precious name of our risen Lord, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Be blessed.